I thought today we could sort of cast backwards through time um, and take a broader view on these hero stories that have really been driving the overculture for millennia. You know, these patterns, these archetypes in their extreme have obviously been incredibly destructive, but also deeply necessary in our evolution as the species. I'd like to propose, I'd like to think that we are in the end stages of what I would call a collective possession by this hero archetype. And at the same time, we are crossing a new threshold um, into a new epoch, which is both a reunion with what we've lost, but carrying what we have developed over the last 4,000 years, also a completely new way of being in relationship with that history. And this transition that I think we're making <clears throat> is carry, um, each of us carries a great responsibility in helping its becoming. And I think that responsibility requires great bravery. So just a bit of history, a reminder, if you already know some of the, you know, the development of Western civilization, but during the Paleolithic and Neolithic eras, the Great Mother was the principal deity worshipped around the world. And obviously the traditions were different from culture to culture, but ultimately the idea was that all of life was connect, understood as connected and interdependent. The multitudes of species and the cosmos itself was in sacred relationship with each other within her. And so the most important takeaway from this is that there was no separation between creator and created, or in our language, spirit and matter. So along with the installment of the Father God uh, came those patriarchal conquests in Greece and the Middle East and those punishing doctrines of the Judeo-Christian um, religions, rationalist philosophy in Greece, from Greece, and um, the objectivist science in modern Europe, all of which really still characterize modern civilization. Uh, so it's pretty fair to say that the last four millennia have been driven by the archetype of the masculine hero, the conqueror. And as a society, we <clears throat> have obviously accomplished great feats of art and technology, communication, science, and wealth. Um, but the, the result has been catastrophic because it's been a one-sided development um, that has brought both our world and the human psyche profoundly and dangerously out of balance. So what does it mean to really be driven by an archetype exactly? Who are they and how do they get a hold of us and how do they get a hold of the wheel of civilizations? So Jung uh, coined the word archetype in the way we understand it today and he um, described archetypes as universal patterns in the psyche, in the nature of the psyche that are inherited from the collective unconscious. So I always think of the cordyceps mush mushroom uh, in, to zombie ants, you know, that, <laughs> that whole story. Um, and that archetypes in a very similar way can get a hold of us uh, and get a hold of our individual lives and drive us unconsciously in ways that we aren't aware of um, until sometimes Sometimes way too long after the fact. Um, and in this same way, they can get a hold of entire cultures. But I think I know um, that it, it's possible to have a more volitional and participatory relationship with our symbols and archetypes. But it means clearing our psyches of invasive species, foraging for more nutritious story sprouts and seeding our responses in that dialogue between the worlds through our actions and through ritual. So I wanted to take a moment <clears throat> 
to ask the question, who is the pattern maker? So who makes the archetypes? This is a question I've been holding in my heart for a long time, and I don't propose to have any answers. Um, but in the last um, five years or so, I've been um, devoting my study to to really answer this question. And um, I, I'm growing to call this intelligence wisdom. Jung said that spirit is that which creates images in the inner field of vision and organizes them into a meaningful order. So I'll read that again. That which creates that factor, which creates images in the inner field of vision and organizes them into a meaningful order. So wisdom is that pattern maker who leads us through dreams, through synchronicity and other symbolic events in our lives to fulfill a kind of destiny. But I believe wisdom is also at work to fulfill our potential as a species and the success of which depends on whether we choose to participate consciously with the story unfolding in each of our individual lives.